So in this session, I'm going to be talking about parameter sniffing. How many times in this conference have you guys heard other presenters talking about parameter sniffing so far? Yeah, it's something that once you know what the term is, you can recognize it really quickly. I run into a lot of it myself doing performance tuning. My name's Bren Ozar. I do a lot of crazy things with SQL Server, and I get to run a lot of strange experiments. You'll get to see some of those experiments inside this. This is one of those weird topics that you may have to revisit a couple of times as I go through this, because the concepts of statistics and parameter sniffing kind of weave in together, so they can kind of be confusing as to when I have a statistics problem versus when I have a parameter sniffing problem. In the course of this hour, I'm going to teach you four things. You guys have probably seen a lot about parameter sniffing and what the symptoms look like during this conference. So I'm only going to spend about 10 minutes on the first one. The second one, I'm going to teach you what to do when you do have parameter sniffing emergencies just to get past the emergency. And then when you're ready to go fix the code long term, I'm going to show you the thing that everyone does and is actually wrong. And I don't mean option recompile. I'm completely fine with option recompile. But I'll show you a few killer gotchas around that as well. We're going to start out with the first thing, which is what is parameter sniffing? And I'm going to show it in a real SSMS here in a second. But I'm going to show you the queries that I'm going to use first. I'm dealing with the Stack Overflow database, which is the open source database from stackoverflow.com. And I'm going to be looking at the users table. The users table has something kind of interesting. It has a reputation field. There's about 5 million users at Stack Overflow. 3 million of them have a reputation of just one point. They register at Stack Overflow. They ask a crappy question. They get told, don't post your homework here. And then they go register with a different name because they're so ashamed. And then they use the new account from here on out. It's very rare that you see people with a reputation of exactly two points. Because if you're going to do something at Stack Overflow, you're probably going to keep doing it, answering questions, upvoting people, downvoting people. The vast majority of people either have one point or they have more than one. Hardly anybody has two. In fact, in this copy of Stack Overflow, only about 5,000 people have exactly two, uh, two reputation points. And I'm going to start my query by creating an index. I'm going to create an index on the reputation field, but that's the only field in that index. This is not a covering index, but you'll notice that my select needs a lot more than just the reputation. I also need everything on their user record, their display name, their last access date, their about me field, all of that. So this index isn't going to cut it for when I need 3 million people and I'm doing a select star. I really needed a covering index. I just don't have one. Let's go see how it looks. So I'm going to pop into SQL Server Management Studio here, and I'm going to run two queries. I'm going to run select star from users where reputation equals 1, and then select star from users where reputation equals 2. You'll notice that this query takes a while. This query takes like 30 seconds in order to run. That's just because Management Studio sucks at painting 3 million rows in a grid. And that's how many users I'm asking it to bring back in that first query. If I click anywhere in the first result set, and I zoom down here to the bottom, you'll see that Windows loves to pop up things. Hi, I'm Metro. Get out of my life. Uh, so we come back with about 3.3 million rows for reputation equals 1. If I click down in the second result set where reputation equals 2, I only get about 5,300 rows. Big, huge difference between those two. SQL Server is smart enough to build two different query plans. In the top query plan, it scans the whole clustered index of the table. Because I asked for select star, if I need all of the fields, then it's more efficient to just scan the clustered index and get out. 
Whereas, if I only wanted, say, 5,000 rows, then it's more efficient to do a quick index seek on my non-clustered index just on reputation, and then go do 5,300 key lookups in order to get those extra fields. If I hover my mouse over that key lookup, you'll see the output list there. This is the list of all the fields that SQL Server had to go get due to me being a sloppy developer and just saying select star, I want all the data. Now these two execution plans, they have very different costs. And if you were in my Watch Brent Tune query session yesterday, you'll remember that I said that those percentages, 79% versus 21%, they're not very reliable, but in this case, that top query is more work. I am scanning the whole entire table. A way to see exactly how much work is involved is to use the command set statistics IO on. When I run set statistics IO on, it gives me the exact number of logical reads which are 8K page reads in order to pull off this query. In the top query in my select star where reputation equals one, I'm scanning the whole table. Scanning the whole table is large. It's not as large as 23 seconds might indicate though. Remember this query is slow just because SSMS is not good at painting a lot of results. The top query when I do a select star where reputation is one, I do 80,000 reads in order to scan the table. In the bottom query, I do 16,000 reads. It's less, but remember, I'm getting 5,000 people's information. If I look over at the execution plan, the reason why this query is a lot of reads is that I had to execute this key lookup 5,000 times. I really wish execution plans were three-dimensional. I wish they popped off the page the number of times that they were executed. You would all be wearing 3D glasses, and then you'd be freaked out when I do jazz hands. If you look at number of executions up there, 5,300 times, that's 5,300 reads at least that I had to do on this index. SQL Server has the concept of a tipping point. Whenever it thinks it's going to touch about 5% of the pages in the table, it says, screw it. I'm just going to scan the whole thing instead. In the top case, when I go get 3 million rows, SQL Server knows that's higher than the tipping point, and it's more efficient to just scan the table once and be done. Notice the estimated number of rows here. Estimated number of rows is 3 million. SQL Server knew what was happening and did the right thing. So far, so good. Now let's switch over and make this thing a stored procedure. And I don't want you to think that a stored procedure is the only time parameter sniffing happens. You can get parameter sniffing in lots of different scenarios. That stored procedure has the same exact T-SQL that I had before. I have just put that select statement inside a stored proc. Now what happens when I run this stored proc with a reputation of one or a reputation of two? Before, when I had two different select statements, SQL Server would lovingly handcraft a perfect execution plan for each of those queries. But that's not how it works with stored procedures or parameterized SQL. SQL Server builds an execution plan based on the first set of parameters that it gets into that stored procedure. So what it's going to do is it's only going to give me one execution plan for both queries. Zoom out and resize this a little so you can see. So now whether I select reputation equals one or I select reputation equals two, I get exactly the same execution plan. Unfrozen caveman developer says, one plan is bad. I don't always want to do a table scan. Sometimes I should want to do an index seek. And that's true. I am doing 80,000 reads now every time this query runs. 
And 80,000 reads might sound like a lot, but it could be much worse. I'll also notice one thing while I'm in here. The first time that this query ran, SQL Server built this plan expecting that 3 million rows would come back. Look at estimated number of rows, 3 million. Actual number of rows, 3 million. Down at the bottom, that estimated number of rows is saved for every time the query runs from here on out. If I have a big stored procedure with lots of lines in it, and maybe it's got sorts and joins, SQL Server estimates how much memory the query will need, and that estimate is set when the query is first compiled. So SQL Server, in this case, might estimate a large memory grant oh my God, I'm going to need a lot of memory in order to handle 3 million rows. And it's going to use that large grant every time the query runs from here on out. That can be a problem if you run lots of these queries at exactly the same time. Those of us in the crowd, how many of us have monitored page life expectancy? This metric in SQL Server. So for those of you who have, you know that it kind of drops off a cliff sometimes. Well, if you have a bunch of queries run that want large memory grants, whammo, your page life expectancy simply falls off a cliff. Now, this isn't that bad. Both of these queries ran. And remember, when I ran them as individual selects, the big one took about 23 seconds, and the small one took less time. Here, they both take, in total, 26 seconds. So who cares, right? Let's flip this around and let's do it in the opposite order. Let me go blow the plan cache, which just means from this point forward, I'm going to get new execution plans based on whatever happens next in SQL Server. You could also think of this as me restarting the SQL Server, except I have a really flaky version of SQL Server right now, so I'm not going to go restarting it because it's kind of like Russian roulette at this point. Now I'm going to run it the opposite way. And now I ran it with reputation equals two first. Now, uh, you notice I immediately got an execution plan, and the first query finished. But reputation equals two was always fast. The bigger metric is, is reputation one any slower? Because now we have an execution plan that's designed for tiny amounts of data. It's designed for reputation equals two. Now the query seems like it still finishes in about the same amount of time, but there's a hidden nasty thing that's happening inside my SQL Server right now. And in order to see it, I can't just see it by query runtime. I have to switch over and look at execution plans. Now, both of these queries are using the index seek plus the key lookup. This is the plan that was designed for very tiny amounts of data. SQL Server built this execution plan saying, I'm only going to have 5,300 rows come back. So it's OK if I use the index, and then I only have to execute this key lookup 5,300 times. The problem comes in down here. The index seek doesn't cost that much more. Yes, we seek directly in, and now we have to wade through five, three million rows to build a big list of uh, people that we're going to look up. The index seek isn't the problem, even though the estimates are off. This is the problem. Look at estimated number of executions versus number of executions. Oh, I'm only going to have to do this 5,300 times. Oh, sweet potato, I have to do this 3 million times. It's actually executing this 3 million times. And remember how I mentioned casually earlier that every time I do this key lookup, I have to read pages? Well, let's go over to Statistics I.O. Let's look over on the Messages tab and how many reads I did, that's more than 80,000. It only takes 80,000 reads 
to scan the entire table. And yet now, SQL Server's doing over 10 million page reads. We don't notice it in SSMS because it seems like the query is the same speed that it always has been. But under the hood inside SQL Server, it's screaming in pain. I have a query now that looks the same to the end users that it always looked. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but now the server is churning through all of this data every time it runs the query, and every other query on this system will feel slower as this little car crash is happening, especially if you're running hundreds of these queries at exactly the same time. This is what parameter sniffing really is. It's a query that doesn't seem like a big deal, but if it happens to get optimized for the wrong parameters, you're screwed. So this is the first thing that I wanted you to know, is what parameter sniffing is. Second, I wanted you to know how to react to it when it strikes. When parameter sniffing strikes, what happens is you get a phone call or a page from the end user saying, the SQL Server's on fire, we don't understand what's wrong, and I swear nothing has happened. They swear nothing has changed whatsoever, and they're kind of right. I mean, anything will cause a query plan to disappear from cache. Maybe someone updated statistics. Maybe you hit a certain point where the statistics became invalid. Maybe somebody did an alter index rebuild on a table. So when you're new at this kind of thing, here is how you fix parameter sniffing from the most junior point of your career to the most senior point of your career. When you first get started, you just walk in there and you hit the power button on the server and you, you know, hit it again and off you go. Later, you realize that's not such a good idea, so you start to restart the SQL Server instance rather than restarting all of Windows. Later, you blow the plan cache, and then you think you're a fancy pants DBA when you go, we should rebuild all our indexes every day. This way it'll stop query plan problems. It seems like every time I do this, query plans just get better. And you're right, but it's only because rebuilding indexes also update stats at the same time. And when you update stats on an object, it invalidates all of the query plans that have that object in it. Same thing with updating stats. When you update stats, instead of rebuilding indexes, that's usually faster. And it seems like it makes the problem go away, but you're just gambling that whatever people call that query with next is suddenly going to be the right parameters. I love gambling. I'm a huge fan of Las Vegas. This is why I have to still go and do presentations in order to pay for my gambling problems. But there's a better way, and I don't like gambling with SQL Server. I just like gambling on roulette. I'm not smart enough to play blackjack. So what I do, I'm American, we don't have good math, I can't count to 21. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna run a stored procedure called SP Blitz Cache. I'm gonna zoom in and show it to you. Now, SP Blitz Cache, what this thing does is it examines the most resource intensive queries in your plan cache. Normally, when your server's under load, you're going to see 10 queries inside here, but I just restarted this thing in order to do the demo. You would normally see a whole bunch of queries, and you're going to notice the regular ones on there. Like, if you go home and run this today on your SQL server, you'll see what I call the opposite of the leaderboard. These are not good queries. These are the sucker board. These are the worst queries, the worst ones in your environment. But when you run it during a parameter sniffing emergency, you're going to look at one of those queries and go, wait a minute, users by reputation, that's never on the sucker board. Why is that thing all of a sudden at the top of the sucker board? And notice what we have in here is warnings. 
We do analysis on your queries, and then we take a shower afterwards. We do analysis on your queries, and we say things like, it's probably a victim of parameter sniffing. It's a query that, for exactly the same query or stored procedure, sometimes takes hardly any resources, and sometimes takes a ton of resources for exactly the same query. That's the classic sign of parameter sniffing, a query that's sometimes super fast and sometimes insanely slow. Now, if you scroll all the way to the right-hand side of SP Blitz Cache, way off to the right, you have this. Remove just this one query from the plan cache. I don't want to rebuild indexes. I don't want to update stats. I want to go, you know what? Let me just do a surgical strike and get this one query out of the cache. I'm not fixing anything. I'm just trying to get the users to put down the guns so I can do some better performance troubleshooting later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this out, and then I'm going to paste it into SSMS. But before I run it, I need to save this plan because whatever crappy plan it has right now, this is my only chance to keep that plan and save it. So I know I'm going to make you move around as I go from place to place. I'll stay, I'll stay solid here in a second, and then I'll moon you. I'll have the audience moon you. Won't that be fun? So here's the query plans. I can click on the plan, and I can save it. I don't know yet why this is bad. I just know that it is bad. And if I get all fancy, I can right click on here and click properties. And over in the properties window on the side, you'll notice that there's a parameter list. This tells you the parameters that were used to build this plan. This is the set that I'm gonna use in a minute to test because I want to be able to test when I get the tiny plan versus when I get the big plan. There might be nothing wrong with these parameters, but I need to save them. So what I'm going to do is just click File, Save As, Really Crappy Query Plan, save that. And now I'm going to jump back over into my other window where I have free proc cache, and I'm going to run it. And I'm only going to clear that one individual plan from the plan cache and nothing else. Then I'm going to pick up the phone and ask the users, is it better now? Is performance better now? When I free that one plan from the cache, it doesn't fix any queries that are already running. If somebody already started a query and it's got the crappy plan, that query still has to finish. So I just kill all their queries instead. <laughs> then I tell them, go run the query again. And hopefully, if they run it again, now they're going to get the better plan. I am just gambling. I told you I liked roulette. Maybe they call it again with that same parameter value. Maybe I go in and call it myself with a better parameter value. But all I'm trying to do is get the emergency to stop so now I have taught you the second thing in that list. How do you go react when parameter sniffing emergency strike? We still have to fix the query. So now let's fix the query. And the first thing I have to do in order to fix this query is I have to be able to run it and get different plans. I'll tell you a secret. I often do this in production. I probably shouldn't, but sometimes I have access to servers where I can go edit a stored procedure live. Most of us don't have that luxury. Most of the time, you're not able to edit the stored procedure. So if I give you this query and I say, all right, go ahead and run this query for me, I bet what a lot of you will do is you'll right click in here You'll click Edit Query Text, and then you'll comment this out, and you'll put Declare. 
you'll comment out the as, and maybe you'll set this equals to two. How many of you do your testing this way? So when I do it, so I've got this exact same query I had before. Let's click query, show me the actual execution plan. Now when I execute this, what plan am I going to get? I'm going to get an invalid plan because I'm in the wrong database. Ah, see, it was a test. <laughs> so what query plan am I going to get? The same one as what? I'm going to go, I do the same thing when I'm not sure. I'm like, mouthful of spaghetti. Yes. <laughs> what am I going to get? I'm going to get the seek plan, right? So how many rows does SQL Server expect to come back here? Let me zoom down a little bit. That's not 5,000. Estimated number of rows, 314.7. All right, okay, no problem. That's cool. Maybe it's just something a little buggy. Let's go back over here. And uh, let's, uh, let's do this to prove that I have nothing up my sleeves. Free proc cache. Now, let's run it with reputation equals one. Execute. What plan am I going to get? Spaghetti's really good. How many of you think I'm going to get the scan, the clustered index scan? How many of you think I'm going to get the index seek plus a key lookup? Ah. How many of you are just saying that because you think I'm asking the question on purpose? Ah. So, let's see what we get here. And this query was never fast. It still took 23 seconds. So when SQL Server does this, when SQL Server's choosing to do an index seek followed by a key lookup, it's expecting a relatively small number of rows. All right, SQL Server, how many rows are you expecting? Hover your mouse over this index seek, and then you experience the joy of SSMS. There you go. Looks familiar, right? That's not 5,000. It's not 3 million. That number comes from somewhere else. When you use a local variable like I'm using here, this guy right here, SQL Server's not optimizing for that. SQL Server's optimizing for something else entirely. This is what your statistics look like on that reputation index. DBCC show statistics is one of those DBCC commands that once you know what it is and you understand how statistics work, you don't need to run it often, but you need to know that it's there. Normally, when I ran for reputation equals one or two or three, SQL Server uses this little histogram to expect how many rows are going to come back. But when I use a local variable, SQL Server uses something else called the density vector. This guy right here, watch this. Select this crazy scientific number times the number of rows in the table equals a number you've seen before. Whenever you test code and you do it by declaring a local variable, you're never going to see parameter sniffing because no matter what value you pass in, SQL Server always estimates this number. So you tune the query thinking you've fixed the parameter sniffing problem. Look at me, no matter what value I use now, I always get the same plan. You deploy it into production, what? I'm fired again? Good thing I'm really friendly with that recruiter. So if I'm gonna fix this, if I'm gonna even test it to see how it works, I can't use a local variable. I have to create a stored procedure. And what messes with people's minds is, you usually think, I'm not allowed to create stored procedures. How can I do this? Boom. 
execute. You can create temp stored procedures just like you do regular stored procedures or regular temp tables. So now I can say exec users by reputation with reputation equals two or one, let's say. I can go execute this. And now when this thing finishes in about 20 seconds, this is the only way that I can actually get that three million row estimate and do an entire table scan. So when this thing finishes, do, 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 do. Two, one, zero, execution plan, ta-da. So now I have a clustered index scan, and when I hover my mouse over it, now I'm getting an estimate of three million rows. So now I've taught you the third thing. First thing, I taught you what parameter sniffing is. Second thing, I taught you how to react to emergencies. Third thing, I've taught you how to test your code, and the only way you can test it is by building stored procedures. You can't use declares of local variables. I've also kind of taught you something else sneaky. You may have database administrators who've said, you're never allowed to deploy code. If you've got access to tempdb, now you can drop in temp stored procedures. I didn't teach you that officially, I just may have kind of sneakily taught you that. So, we've gone through parts one through three. Now let's hit number four. How am I gonna actually fix this thing for life? Well, the first way, oh, I should say first two. Whenever I talk about this, I see people with their notepads and their pens are frozen in midair. And they're waiting for me to get to the option that doesn't suck. All of these options suck. There is no one right answer. Every answer is different for every scenario. And I'm gonna talk about how some of these scenarios would fail for my Stack Overflow query. They may work just fine for yours. First off is option recompile. There are two places that I can stick a recompile. <laughs> oh, that could get dark fast. Uh, so I could put an option recompile down at the entire stored procedure level. I could say, I'll build this stored procedure with recompile so that every single time the stored proc runs, the whole thing gets a new execution plan. Or I can stick recompile on specific statements inside the stored procedure. You always want to stick statement level recompiles in. Never put them on the entire stored procedure. Because when you put it on the whole stored procedure, you lose all metrics that track how often the stored procedure ran. Even if you put this hint on every single statement in the stored proc, I'm still okay with that. Because at least this way, I can track how often your stored proc runs. I just won't know anything about the statements inside of it. I am a huge fan of option recompile for queries that don't run very often. If it runs every three times a minute, five times a minute, recompile is okay. It builds you a perfect execution plan every time, that, well, not perfect, but a pretty good execution plan every time it runs. The more this query compiles, though, the more CPU that that ends up using. The reason that I don't like running it more often than that is this. In SQL Server 2008, if you ran queries with option recompile, there was a chance that you would get my query results and I would get your query results. If a user came to you with that, if a user brought in a report and said, I ran this for Ukraine and I got Bolivia, you would tell them to put the crack pipe down. You would never believe them. That's not how relational databases work. And you think, oh, that's just back in 2008. That'll, oh, it happened again. <laughs> it happened again in 2012. 
Now, I bet at your office, there's that one part of the code that you don't ever want to touch because it's terrifying. And you know when you touch it, 15 other things break. When I see things like this happen in SQL Server, that's the same kind of concern that I have. There's nothing for me to expect this couldn't happen again in the future. I'm okay with option recompile when it's not used too often, but I may not want to use it around, say, healthcare data or personally identifiable data where it would be very bad if Mary saw Bob's healthcare results. So I'm going to move on to the next option. The next option is to slap on an optimize for unknown hint in the query. Optimize for unknown works just like declaring a local variable. It says, I want you to optimize this query for the average reputation. In my case, at the Stack Overflow query, that means I would optimize it for 314.7 rows. That sucks. That would cause the parameter sniffing problem to happen for me. Yes, it would be great for tiny amounts of data, but when someone runs it for reputation one, my server's going to fall over again. Optimize for unknown works really well when your data is evenly distributed. But if your data is evenly distributed, you don't have a parameter sniffing problem. All of the parameters would give you the same plan. So we jokingly call this optimize for mediocre because it gives you a plan that's predictable, it just may not be predictably good. And as a database administrator who was involved with Stack Overflow along the way, I kind of cringed when Jeff Atwood, one of the founders of Stack Overflow, found this hint and blogged about it. Hey, everybody, check out Optimize for Unknown. And I'm like, no, Jeff, no, that's, that's not really a good idea. <laughs> and sooner or later, he comes back and he's like blogging to everybody, this isn't really a good idea. And I'm like, yeah, I, I kind of told you about that. <laughs> the other way that you can do this is to slap in your own local variable inside the code. You can set up your own local variable and immediately assign that to whatever was on the outside. Don't ever, 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 ever do this. Because when other people inherit your code and they go to look at it, they think you're a moron. <laughs> and the first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna rip that out because they don't understand how bright and attractive you are, right? <laughs> If you want to use this, if you want the density vector, just use the optimize for unknown hint. That scares people. And then they won't touch your code. They'll go, oh, there's some kind of rocket surgery going on over here. Another way that I could do it is I could hard code business logic right into the stored procedure. I could say optimize for reputation equals one. This way, no matter what parameter they call it with, I will always get an execution plan designed for a clustered index scan because it's a big, huge amount of data. That might sound backwards, but in my scenario, this is a great fix. Clustered index scans usually sound bad, but remember, this is only 80,000 reads. If the wrong query gets into the plan cache, I'm going to be doing 10 million logical reads, and that sucks. Now, this has drawbacks, too. When you code business logic in or magic numbers inside your data, then you have to worry about what happens if the data changes. What happens if, at Stack Overflow, we suddenly start giving people 100 points for reputation instead of just one? I may have to go back and change some of my magic values inside the stored procedures. But if I really care about performance tuning, this might work OK. Just know that you're racking up a little technical debt. You may have to go back and change this code again when your data changes. It's another trick you can use. I can put branching logic inside my code. 
I can say if reputation equals one, go run this stored procedure. Otherwise, if the value is anything else, go run this other stored procedure. But you'll notice these have to be stored procedures. They can't just be SQL inside here because if this was just a simple select up in here, whoop, I got a point over at the other side. If this was just a simple select right here, it looks like I'm drunk, but this is just radio interference, <laughs> as far as you know. Uh, so if this was just a select, SQL Server would build one execution plan and then reuse that over and over again. But when they're stored procedures, they get parameter sniffing. So that top stored procedure of reputation one, he gets sniffed but he will get sniffed for a reputation of one. He will get a perfect execution plan for a reputation of one. The second stored procedure will also get parameter sniffing. Whenever he runs, he will get sniffed for a value of, it doesn't really matter, it's something other than one. And as long as everybody else gets the same execution plan, they will get the seek plus the key lookup. This is also embedding a little dangerous business logic inside my code. But this is the kind of trick that you can use when you have to scale something really big quickly and you're not allowed to change the underlying tables. You can also do lists of numbers in here if you like. But the part that I find especially mind-blowing is that both of these stored procedures could have exactly the same code in them. They'll just get different execution plans because they're different stored procedures. The hardest way to pull this off is to get a single execution plan that's great for everyone. And the easy answer there is a covering index. I could build a covering index on reputation and then all of the other fields but who does that, really? I can't do that in production. I can't cover every single query. So this one is much more challenging. So the four things that I wanted to teach you inside here. First, what parameter sniffing is. Second, how to react to it with SP Blitz Cache with expert mode turned on and just free one individual plan from the cache after you've saved that thing. Third, don't test it with local variables. You have to test it with a real stored procedure. And then finally, option recompile, not such a great trick when this thing starts to be executed more and more frequently and the wrong people may see someone else's results. I have a ton more resources on this exact problem. If you go to brentozr.com slash go slash sniff, it also has a link to Earl and Summerskog's epic post, fast or slow in the application, fast in SSMS. Erlen presented here earlier. Erlen's a very humble guy. There's something that he won't tell you about himself. He has what he calls a blog and the rest of us call an encyclopedia. Because when he writes a post, he goes back to it over and over for years. His post on parameter sniffing, if you printed it, would be over 50 pages long. It has a table of contents in the blog post. <laughs> Good on you, buddy. So now having gone through that, what questions do you guys have on parameter sniffing? Oh, yes. What if we use dynamic SQL? I love dynamic SQL, and it's rare that you'll hear a DBA say that, you know, I love dynamic SQL, because the problem is it's kind of painful to debug, and if you think about my particular query, where did my key go? If I think about my particular query, let me pop up and show this guy, and ignore the fact that it has recompile. If I built a string for that, if I build a string and it has a different plan in the cache for every reputation value, I can end up with a whole bunch of plans in the cache. So it would have one for, so let me show you. This is kind of neat to see. 
So let's go, I'm gonna pop open SSMS, I'm gonna start a new window, and I'm gonna do the things that English presenters will tell you you should never, ever, ever do, type in a demo. Select star from DBO users where reputation equals one, go. Copy the exact same thing where reputation equals two. Now I'm not building dynamic SQL, but I wanna show what happens with pure strings. SP Blitz Cache. SP Blitz Cache is the thing that shows us what's inside the plan cache. Now it's going to take 23 seconds for this thing to run because that kind of st select star, the first one, is going to take a little while. But when I get out of here, the, the last thing that I want to look at after, not when I get out of here, that's when I start drinking, um, but when this query finishes, then I'm going to start drinking. 23 seconds. SP Blitz cache runs, and this line down here tells us what's in the plan cache right now. Every unique string gets its own entry in the plan cache. And I know what you're thinking, who cares? Well, that burns up memory usage, memory usage that could be used to cache data instead. So if you built a string for every single value when reputation equals three, when reputation equals four, when reputation equals five, next thing you know, your plan cache is huge and you're using memory less for caching data pages. Outside of that, I love dynamic SQL. And on servers with lots, I say lots of memory, 128 gigs or more, dynamic SQL is a great approach. I'm a huge fan. As long as I have this up, let me show you something else that's kind of funny. So if I said, I said select star from users where reputation equals two, one, I'm going to take that out and I'm going to do two and three. Actually, no, I'll do two and two. So both of these are quick. They're both short. And now how many entries do I have in the plan cache? I have just one entry in the plan cache. It says select star from users where reputation equals two. I have one entry and it has two executions. Now, let's say, hi, mom. It's in a comment, and I'm going to execute. I'm going to go down. I now have two different things in the plan cache. If you change anything in strings, they can get their own plan in the cache. You know how sometimes people will bring you this query and they'll say, this query runs really slow, can you go take a look? And the first thing you do is go format it. You like paste it into a website to clean up their SQL because it's horrible SQL. You can end up getting a different plan in the cache than they got. You're sort of a victim of parameter sniffing in a good way. All of a sudden your query is blazing fast because it was optimized for different parameters. Now the comment, that is a change in the string. But let's do this. Let's say, let's format this a little bit more nicely. Same exact query, but it's two different strings. When I go down and look, I have two different entries in the plan cache. Now, let's go back to our normal one. Let's have two exactly the same queries. And now I'm gonna say, from. All I'm doing is lower casing the word from, and I get two different entries in the plan cache. This is why DBAs get a little worried about dynamic SQL. The more variations of strings that you build, the more different entries you can end up piling up inside the plan cache. This is also why you never, ever, ever build dynamic strings that say things like built on, you also try to type things correctly, built on 2017-05-15, you know, hour, hour, minute, minute, for user, from you know, Brent, Ozar. Any strings that you put in here, you're going to end up compiling different plans. So imagine that I have two of these. I have a dynamic SQL generator, and the other one says it's being built for, because he's a nice guy, Erlen Summerskog, execute. If I go down and look at my plan cache, I end up with two different entries in the plan cache even though they're identical. Just don't put dynamic stuff inside strings. Next question. Yes. 
you're here, Erlen Summerskog. All right, so everyone should give a, no, wait, 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 wait. Everyone should give a round of applause to Erlen for his excellent blog post, Slow in the App, Fast in the Yes. You're not worried about anything. You're a mellow guy. Yes. <laughs> Your CPU goes on fire. Yeah, so uh, the, you're saying that the reason why you don't like option recompile is that CPU use is very high to build up. What's that? You need to use it wisely. Yeah, absolutely. You also noted that you were told by Microsoft that this bug was very hard to repro and very hardly ever happens. I was also told by my parents that I was very special. It was just like a snowflake. They were wrong. Uh, it's, it's a matter of faith, you know, it's, and it may be very hard to repro. I'm actually more worried about the next time they break that same bug. Just like in one of the recent cumulative updates, they broke no lock. CU4, I want to believe it was for 2012, one of the SPs, you could run queries with no lock and it took locks out. Building a query optimizer is hard. Building a storage engine is hard. I continuously salute Microsoft for what an amazing job they do, but they have people who show up drunk to work just like you do sometimes. <laughs> Some of you may even work for Microsoft. Yes. So m next question. I know. How many of you learned something here during this session? Woohoo! All right, cool. Well, thanks for hanging out with me this afternoon, and I will see you guys around uh, here tonight, this afternoon or tonight. Thanks, everybody. Thank